Hello, and welcome to this short video showing you how to integrate your My Home devices into your Control 4 system. Energini make a very nice range of products under the My Home brand for taking control of your heating, lighting, and various appliances. Here's a, a quick look at the range of devices that, that are available. The My Home system consists of a gateway to which a whole range of devices connect wirelessly. The, these devices encompass lighting control, switched outlets for um, controlling high power relays, 13 amp sockets, um, plug-in plug adapters, multi-gang multi sockets, plus also a TRV valve for controlling sort of radiators, and a variety of sensors. A contact sensor for sensing sort of doors and windows opening, a motion sensor, and an energy monitor. And this is a, a current clamp that can um, go around the incoming mains in the, in the fuse board. Or a plug-in energy monitor. This allows you to monitor the energy consumption of um, a device that is plugged into that. So let's have a look at how we would integrate these into your Control 4 system. We have created a whole suite of drivers that enables you to integrate all the My Home devices into your Control 4 system. This consists of a bridge driver that performs all the communication with the My Home system, and then a series of Foxy drivers for each of the devices that you wish to integrate. We're going to look at each of these in turn, but but essentially they are um, the four gang for controlling um, four, four relays on the multi-gang socket, an individual relay driver, uh, the TRV driver for controlling thermostatic radiators, a lighting driver that enables you to control switch lighting modes on and off, contact sensor that gives you an interface for the My Home sensing devices, and a, a monitor driver that is used for monitoring electricity usage. Once you have brought the devices into your Control 4 project, on the documentation tab, there is a very simple matrix that lists all the My Home devices and the compatible Control 4 drivers. Important thing to note is that if we look at something like a My Home socket, there are two potential options for drivers. One is a relay and one is a light. And the one you choose will depend on the usage that you want to put that device to. So for example, if you have a table lamp plugged into the socket, you would want to use the lighting driver because that will give you a lighting proxy in control for. However, if there was an electric heater plugged into that, you might want to instantiate a relay driver and then hook that up to a proxy element that showed um, on-off control of a heating element in your control for interface. We'll look at this in, a, in more detail later on. So let's now look at how we create a project. The first driver that we need to instantiate is the bridge driver and this is the driver that communicates with the My Home Cloud service. Once we've installed the driver we then need to specify the username and password for our My Home account and the driver will then log into the cloud service and interrogate it to determine the uh, configured devices. There are a couple of fields here that give you information about whether the communication has been successful. In this case here we can see that it is successfully logged in to the cloud service and it is receiving events. Uh, the last event that it received was uh, at 8.04 on Sunday evening. Uh, that was just a few seconds ago. Having added the bridge driver, we can now then go ahead and instantiate all the drivers for each of the devices in our system. And let's look at these one at a time. So let's start by looking at the relay driver. Now, this represents um, a very simple on-off control of a device. Um, looking at the documentation, we can see the range of compatible um, My Home devices. I've um, got a simple relay, um, a My Home socket, the adapter, and the adapter plus. 
all of these can use the relay device driver. The bridge has already interrogated the My Home Cloud service, so it has a record of all the configured devices in your system and what type of devices that they are. And it can communicate this information to the individual drivers. And then the individual drivers use that to display a list of just the compatible devices in your project for you to select. Now, in this case, in our system, I have a device that I have actually named imaginatively as Relay. So we sort of select that. And that is that device configured. The Relay driver doesn't actually create a user interface in Control 4. In order to do that, we need to decide what type of device that is actually controlling and then instantiate a, a compatible driver. So here, under my drivers, we can see a list of all the elements that are available. Fans, gates, driveway heaters, etc. I mean, in our case, I've decided this is actually controlling a fan. So I've added a fan driver into my project. And then I bind that to the relay by going onto connections, selecting the relay control input and dragging that onto the energy new relay. And in that way, that user interface element is now bound to that energy new relay. And when I control that fan, turning it on or off, that is actually controlling that physical relay. The next device we'll look at is the four gang. Now, looking at our compatibility matrix, the four gang driver represents this four way 13 amp extension block. Functionally, it is very similar to the relay. The only difference is that rather than having a single relay, it provides four individual relays. So if we look at connections on our four gang, we can see there are four individual relay outputs, each one of which can be separately assigned to a user interface element in Control 4. Looking at the properties of the four gang, if we look at the device name, in my project I've only got a single four gang extension socket, so I've only got one option for selecting that. So I'll compare that with the individual relay, and in my project I have a number of individual relay elements. These being a straight relay device, a my home socket is a double gang 13 amp socket. Each one of these 13 amp outlets appears as a separately controllable my home device, and then various plug-in adapters. The next device type to look at is the light. This is the same concept as the relay. It's a device that just has simple on-off control. Key difference being that this provides a user interface element for Control 4. Add this into your project and you will get a, a circuit of lights appearing on your user interface. You'll see here that there are a lot of compatible devices that I have to choose from. Now this is because in addition to the My Home Light Switch, which I have here named as a study, any of the relay elements could in theory have a light load attached to them. Um, for example, you could plug a table lamp into a 13 um, amp plug. You might have a, um, a chandelier wired, wired into the high power relay. Consequently, the, the choices that you've got available for this light proxy encompass not only the uh, lighting load, but all available relay loads. My Home provides a couple of sensor devices, these being a motion sensor and a door contact sensor. These are modelled in Control 4 as a contact input. So we install an instance of the contact input driver and we then select what device that is connected to. Now in my project currently I have a motion sensor in the hall and a door contact sensor on the front door. In this case this is a hall sensor that we are connected to. Very much like the relay, 
this doesn't instantiate a user interface element in control for. We have to do that by de deciding what type of sensor we have and then installing an appropriate interface element. So we look through my drivers. Let's say we have, um, in this case, it's a motion sensor in the hall. So we choose a motion sensor, bring that into our project, and then we go on to connections and bind that context sent and then bind that motion sensor to the my home hall motion sensor. That then gives us an element that appears on the control for interface and raises events in the control for system that we can program against. There are a couple of other drivers that we just need to take a quick look at. The first one of these is the thermostatic radiator valve. When you bring this into your project, simply select the My Home device that that relates to, and you then have thermostat zone available in Control 4. With the current My Home TRV valve, the only adjustments available is at the set point. It also reads back what the current room temperature is. The final device driver to bring into Control 4 is that of the monitor and this is used to read back energy consumption from the my home system here we have a monitor driver that has been brought into our project we select which device it is associated with now in this case we've associated with the quicker which is a, a boiling water dispenser that we have um, very nice by the way i'd highly recommend it so this is monitoring the energy consumption of that quicker. You can see some other choices here. That's because in, in my system I have a current clamp around the incoming mains. So we can monitor that. I also have an adapter plus. This is a 13 amp plug-in adapter that as well as providing on-off control, it also provides a power monitoring capability. Having ad added that into our project, if we look at connections, it's not very exciting. Um, there aren't any connections that we that we need to make. Uh, the interesting things happen in programming. So let's go and have a look at programming view for this for this energy monitor. So here we can see that we've got a variable called power reading and we can program against that. So when the power reading changes, if let's say let's say I'm interested in when when the crew is on and heating hot water. So what we would do is let's say if the power reading and this is power read in watts if that is say greater than 20 watts then switch on the light in the study not quite sure why you'd want to do this but <laughs> and then if it is less than 20 watts, then switch off the light. So what we now have is a very simple automation that takes the energy consumption from the Kruka and if it if it's on, i.e. if it's consuming more than 20 watts, we switch on a light. And if it's off, we switch off the light. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you have any further questions, contact details for Energini and Janus are now shown on your screen.